It's estimated that we have 70,000 different thoughts a day, each one moving us closer or further away from our goals. To get the life that we need, we need to optimize these. Let's dive deep into Brian Tracy's gold mine. Get smart. Long-term perspective versus short-term perspective. I live in Sydney, Australia. Sometimes when I hit up the city, I see homeless people. Some homeless people are truly misfortunate as they suffer from mental illnesses and are unable to help themselves. However, others play a different game. For several years, whenever I would go to the city, I would see the same homeless man. <laughs> Let's call him Tom. Tom would beg for money and tell people the same sad story. Once he got the money, he would go to McDonald's and buy himself a big meal, then he would buy a cigarette to enjoy. This cycle would repeat itself daily for years. So why does Tom stay in the same position for decades? Is he truly helpless? You see, what separates Tom from the Jeff Bezos of the world is the quality of thinking. Successful people tend to focus heavily on long-term perspectives and unsuccessful people seem to focus on the short term. Tom's perspective stretches only a couple of minutes or a few hours at max. He constantly is thinking about his next meal or cigarette. His daily decisions revolve around pleasure in the now at the expense of fulfillment in the future. This is called the law of unintended consequences. To him, begging seems like the right thing to do because it gives him money to survive. However, when he does it for long enough, with no other plan of escape, it makes him a slave. This is called the law of perverse consequences, when something seems good, but ends up being really bad for us. The same reason why they say you should teach a man to fish instead of giving him the fish. On the other side of the spectrum, people like Jeff Bezos are constantly focusing on long-term thinking. Every decision is calculated based on how it will change their circumstances in 5, 10, and even 20 years. They work hard now and make the difficult decisions that might not be comfortable in the moment, but pay great dividends in time. One of my favorite pictures ever is of Jeff Bezos hustling on Amazon in a gritty office, years before it became the juggernaut that it is today. Now that's what I call long-term thinking. Slow thinking versus fast thinking. What's the difference between slow thinking and fast thinking? Fast thinking is intuitive and quick. It's the thinking used when someone asks you if you want to eat a steak or salad. If you want to watch a Dwayne Johnson movie, 100%. Deadlifts or cardio. Slow thinking is more deliberate and conscious. You use it when you plan a surprise birthday party or when you write a resume for your dream job. Most people mess up in life because they use fast thinking for decisions that deserve slow thinking. They quickly decide what job they will get, what they will study for five years, who they will marry for the rest of their lives, what to do with their spare time after work, and how to invest their money in an almost impulsive manner. Slow thinking takes effort and energy, so people avoid it. This is the root of failure for most people and businesses. You can avoid this by thinking about your goals and what you want to achieve, considering which activities can help you attain those goals and being vigilant of those things that are going to distract you from achieving them. To help you with your slow thinking, grab a pen and paper and write your goals on that piece of paper and put the date on the top of the page. Under your goals, put a deadline and a list of things that you could do to achieve the goal. Then get to work. Writing things down will make you four times more likely to achieve them. Let's take Tom the hobo for example. If he used slow thinking, he could save some of the money he received daily from begging until he was able to buy more presentable clothing. He then could go to an internet cafe if he had some leftover money or a library which is free and apply for jobs. Eventually he would get one and be able to start moving out of his situation. Tom could also use some of the money he gets from begging to stuff flipping items for profit. There are many views on YouTube of people flipping items going from a dollar to a thousand dollars from pure creativity and hustle, so it is possible. All of this would have been possible if he used slow thinking, projected himself five years into the future, and then wrote down the activities he needed in order to achieve those goals. Get a way to tap into your subconscious mind. Sometimes we get stuck and we cannot consciously think of creative solutions out of our problems. 
this is when we have to use our hidden superpower. The superpower harnessed by some of the most brilliant minds in history is the subconscious mind. Have you ever wondered why you get such brilliant ideas during showers? You are not alone. There is a whole subreddit dedicated to it called Shower Thoughts. The reason you're able to get these amazing ideas is because you are alone and often your conscious mind cools down a bit. When this happens, you're able to receive subconscious impressions more easily and it's these thoughts that come from deep within that tend to be the most creative and game-changing. Sometimes you need to learn to get out of your own way and allow your inner genius to take care of your problems. Just like David Deida, the author of the book, The Way of the Superior Man, one of my favorites by the way, Brian Tracy suggests you block out time to be in solitude so that you can facilitate the right environment for this state of mind. Three geniuses have spoken on the importance of being alone. Every now and then, go away, have a little relaxation. For when you come back to your work, your judgment will be surer. Go some distance away because then the work appears smaller and more of it can be taken in a glance and the lack of harmony and proportion is more readily seen. Leonardo da Vinci. Be alone. That is the secret of invention. Be alone. That is when ideas are born. Nikola Tesla. Be a loner. That gives you time to wonder, to search for the truth. Have holy curiosity. Make your life worth living. Albert Einstein. There are two main ways that you can do this. The first is to block out time every day where you won't be interrupted. Perhaps waking up an hour earlier than everyone else and sitting on your favorite couch and just being alone with no phones, no distractions, just you and your thoughts. Don't force anything and just let the ideas come to you. The second way is to book yourself a hotel every six months. Don't bring any friends, no girlfriends or wives or children, no social media or Netflix, just you and your thoughts. You see, we live in a fast paced society and it's often hard to find time to contemplate our lives and to see if we're going in the right direction. You desperately need this time in solitude to allow that creative genius to flourish. Look, you have 100 billion brain cells. You are able to think 100 billion thoughts. If we were to put that on paper, that would be one followed by eight pages of zero. Your brain is a powerhouse. In reality, we do not see the world as it is, but as we are. This is called the law of correspondence. We are constantly creating our lives. So it's up to you to master your thoughts and to change your thinking. Get smart. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell notifications so we can see more of each other. Until next time.